Okay, so good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for attending this webinar. My name is Stuart Smith, and I'm a data management consultant at Greytech. So just to give you an introduction to Greytech and just give you an idea of who we are if you're not an existing customer. Um, we're an Autodesk partner um, and we have a presence uh, throughout the globe. We have 26 offices worldwide with 330 employees and of which 25% work within R&D. Um, so I guess one of the things we should identify is what that means to you. Um, what it means is we're able to provide you with um, with software, we're a competitive reseller, and um, we have a large worldwide technical team, and we have a, a large team that specialise in all the various divisions, so AC, MFG, and all the rest. <clears throat> we have the, cap the capacity to support you as a customer. Um, in the UK, we have five offices, Southampton, Milton Keynes, Nottingham, Bradford, and Durham. So although we are a big company and we're a, a platinum reseller we, who are worldwide, we are big enough to cope with tasks for our customer, but we're, we're small enough to care. So you will find that we are um, a business that care about our customers, local to each country and site and location. So just to set the agenda, the presentation today is taking control of change with Autodesk Vault Professional. Um, just to set the agenda up, we're going to start with a brief presentation. It's going to be followed up by a demonstration. We'll then finish with questions and answers, and then a wrap up of everything. Okay, so first thing I guess we need to look at or discuss is why is change so important? Well, as you're all aware, and one of the reasons you're probably on this webinar is because of the importance of change within engineering. For companies designing and manufacturing products, the only constant is change. So the changes are probably happening all the time for you. They're happening for multiple reasons, and they can originate from multiple areas of your business. So it could be within your company, R&D, making updates and improvements to products. It could be field failures, change of suppliers, inventory issues, compliancy changes internally and externally, as well as requests from customers. So we can see, we can see that change can come from anywhere. It can occur at any time. And it's generally at the heart of what we do in engineering. And that's what makes engineering change so complicated. So how are you managing change today? So far too many of the, our customers we've noticed and identified over, over, over years struggle to stay on top of changes. And it's often the case because they're using amalgamation of methods from emails, spreadsheets, documents, and shared folders and map drives. Managing your ECRs, your ECOs approvals, your supply orders across so many different stakeholders using these methods is at best slow and confusing. So at, at worst, it can lead to costly product errors, it can lead to a huge investment in time 
in managing change. So what I want to say is before we continue with the presentation, if you're already a Vault Bakes basic user, or you're already using a PDM system, you may still benefit from this presentation. So at the beginning of this presentation, we're going to look at how using a purpose-built data management solution like Vault Professional can help you take control of the complexity of change and make your company more effective, efficient in managing your engineering change. Often when we're talking about data management, uh, companies, they exclusively focus on the data element and obviously it is an important part of being um, of having a PDM system, um, but you can't think about that in isolation. You need to consider carefully uh, all the stakeholders involved in the process. So data is important, but we need to keep the work flowing smoothly. And I think this is especially true in the case of engineering data um, change management. So Autodesk, they like to look at PDM in three key areas. That's people, process, and data. So first of all, we're going to take a look at people. Uh, we want to identify what their challenges are of getting everyone on the same page. And also, more importantly, how Vault can help you and your entire team stay in sync. So when you're trying to take control of change, getting everyone on the same page is important. So collaboration is essential uh, to the success of the change process. Um, Autodesk and, uh, were provided a survey by Tech Clarity, and they found that in this survey, nearly half of all companies struggled to, uh, with communication and collaboration. So that's quite a significant number. We found from the survey that communicating change within engineering departments uh, was difficult. Individuals often lack visibility into what their team members were working on, or they simply lacked an understanding of why changes were being made in the first place. And in many businesses, they found that problems only got exaggerated um, when working with engineers working in satellite offices, where the visibility got even worse. So finally, we also found that problems of collaboration become even more complex when outside stakeholders get involved. So this could be other departments within your business or even people outside of the company, so customers that are involved in the change process or even suppliers. So, how can, we, how can we improve this situation? Well, a dedicated PDM system like Vault Professional can help you overcome these challenges. PDM can help you facilitate better collaboration, not only with your engineering department, but with outside team members. It does this by providing your engineering team with a check-in and check-out functionality which enables concurrent design without worrying about overwriting each other's data. It provides you with an audit trail so we can see who, what, and when. We have complete, complete traceability over what's happening to our files within the change process. Within Vault, we also have visual data management and reporting. So we can create visual reports of the change process or all of our data within the Vault system. We can control our access, so permissions can be assigned to specific groups and outside groups to ensure people are viewing the data at the right time. We can provide with Vault a web client, which ensures 
that anyone can access data regardless of whether they have a CAD product or not. Vault also integrates with other business systems. So if your company already use SharePoint, you can integrate this with Vault. People can also access Vault data straight from SharePoint. So they can use a system that's familiar to them and they don't have to learn a new system. But Vault does integrate with other Office uh, applications. So if you're using Excel, Word, Outlook, or PowerPoint, these all integrate with Vault. Which means uh, the important part is the, document the documentation that you create um, can be stored within the Vault system. Um, finally, Vault um, allows for easy collaboration across multiple sites. So the important part of that is we can ensure that all engineers are working on uh, the latest file. It does this through multi-site replication. This enables all engineers to work on the same data and replicate files backwards and forwards. So a case point from a customer was Soil Machine Dynamics. So if you're interested in any case studies, please get in touch with us. Um, but just a short statement from this particular customer, they found that by moving to Vault Professional, collaboration was improved they were able to see and tell who was working on what and at what time, and they found the, trans the transition to Vault easy. So the key thing to take away is essentially, it's incredible uh, and it's incredibly common for companies in manufacturing to have challenges in, uh, in managing their design. There's a tremendous value getting all of your engineers and other team members working together. So if you use a product data management system to connect your entire engineering team and others, it will result in better productivity and profitability. It will help you save time. It will give your engineers more time to focus on other activities that can add value to your product, improve your product quality, and shorten development cycles. So secondly, we're going to talk about process. So let's discuss the challenges and bottlenecks that might prevent companies like yours from establishing efficient and effective workflows. And more importantly, how Vault can help optimize the product development process. So, it's often the case when we visit customers that they struggle with establishing efficient and effective workflows. We find that often when we talk to our customers, they find it difficult for or people that don't work within the engineering department are unable to efficiently um, involve themselves in the design and approval process. So you may have a manufacturing team, an assembly team, a, a tooling team, and they're not able to participate early enough in design changes. So by the time it gets to them, and if there is an issue in the tooling that they need to make, it's not possible to manufacture or assemble what you're looking for. It's too far down the line. We often find within engineering departments People find it difficult to interpret where something is within its design process. Are they able to work on it? Can they modify it? We often find that working on shared drives it just means they can open a file and potentially modify it, something that could be released. We also find that in many companies, people are working on the wrong version of a file because they've got them copied local to their machine and people are unaware of who is working on the latest version. On what is the latest version. 
We often find as well that within companies, the bill of materials are created manually. So you put all of this time and effort into the data sets that you create within your engineering products like Inventor. And then you're essentially having to reduplicate this information onto a spreadsheet to pass on to different departments like procurement. And finally, we often find within companies that management are not able to easily monitor uh, project status. So when changes are occurring, they're not able to see who's working on what and where the project is currently lying. So again, how can uh, Autodesk Vault help? Well, Autodesk Vault includes powerful features to help automate and accelerate um, the sharing of more accurate engineering data within your manufacturing team and outside of that team as well. So rather than manually extracting your bill of materials, you can utilize Vault to automate this process. You can potentially even link this up to a business system meaning that we're providing other departments or other people with accurate and up-to-date bills of material. The process for ECRs and ECOs can be automated as well. So manufacturers on the shop floor can access the data quickly and easily from a web client, ensuring that they're looking at the latest and greatest file, and they're able to have input or visibility of changes, reviews or approvals earlier in the process before it becomes too late. And more importantly, because you're all working from a central source or a central location, your engineering and your manufacturing team stay on the same page. It enables you to avoid a lot of duplicate effort and it means you get your product out the door on schedule. So again, another customer proof point. This particular customer, by moving to Vault Professional, were able to manage their changes more efficiently. Change orders became something that was stored electronically, and they were able to make changes uh, far faster, and it caused less disruption to other projects that were ongoing. So again, the key thing to take away from the process is the more complex your products are, the more value you're going to find when you're connecting your engineering team to manufacturing. So if as and when your part counts increase, generally so does the loss of data. So a connected data management system, a central storage system can help automate the process of this um, the, crit the critical transition in your product development cycle. This helps you to remove process bot bottlenecks, it allows you to minimize project delays and also shop floor errors. Essentially, we're able to achieve a better product quality standard and um, we can optimize costs by moving to Vault Professional. So finally, we're gonna take a look at the data component of managing a change. Of course, having fast access um, to your data is at the core of any product data management system. So what sort of issues do customers currently face when they're taking control of change in terms of data. So we often find customers have issues in maintaining the latest and greatest of their data. There are many common data related problems that can arise uh, when trying to manage an engineering change, especially if you can't make use of the PDM system. If your departments are working as silos, um, if your data is scattered into spreadsheets and emails, and if you're maintaining multiple databases of design information, it generally leads to significant challenges. 
So often we find within companies, some of the challenges that they face are they have delays in the change process simply because they can't find the necessary info. They often find themselves redoing documentation because they haven't recorded the previous changes or all past changes. We often find that changes made by a manufacturing department don't get documented back in engineering because they're working on, um, they have copies, files, and this information isn't being stored in one central location. This can often lead to making decisions based on incomplete information, which often results in ordering the wrong parts, not ordering parts on time, and worst of all, working on the wrong version of a document and manufacturing the wrong version of a product. So we find that these challenges occur um, when trying to control the change of data within an environment where you don't have a PDM system. And this essentially leads to wasted time, effort and money. So again, how can we identify how Vault can help? Well, one of the most important parts of the PDM system in Autodesk Vault is it provides you with a central repository for all your product information. This means that all your teams can effectively um, execute changes. The access to the data is managed through permissions, so we can ensure that the relevant people are getting access at the relevant time. You get revision control and versioning within the system. So you're always viewing the latest document, but we have traceability and capability of viewing previous revisions and versions. We can quickly and easily reuse data with, with smart copy design tools within the Vault environment. And if you're working with multiple offices, vendors and suppliers, you're not always going to be working in the same format, which is going to cause issues. Autodesk Professional lets you take uh, advantage of Autodesk Inventor's AnyCAD technology. So regardless of for file format, you can store it within Vault and utilize it in your CAD model without having to convert any data. So you can maintain the customer's data in its native format in Vault. In addition to this, obviously we have our 3D models, we've got our drawings, but there's a lot of other documentation that you're working with, and these are also typically unmanaged. So Vault doesn't differentiate between CAD data and general documentation. You can work and store any type of file within Vault. Vault offers great integration with Microsoft, so Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and Outlook. So it means all of this documentation can be stored within Vault and associated with the relevant projects and the relevant design files. But not only that, you can store any type of file in Vault. It's not exclusively for CAD data. It's a data management system for all data. Again, another customer proof point. Nissan Motorsports found that when they moved to Autodesk Vault Professional, it was fast and accurate in making changes. They're able to change parts much faster and they're able to ensure that they're always working on the latest revision of a document and they were never working on the wrong revision or version. So again, the key thing to take away here is better control. Having control um, of your data means you're making your life easier. So you really need to have a single central repository for all your data. Without that, you're going to struggle to manage your data. But not only that, the processes and your collaboration. So it's all about people, process and data. So I'm going to move on to the demonstration now. 
So in the demonstration, I'm going to be covering uh, an example from an Autodesk customer who utilizes Vault Professional. Um, the demonstration will present some of the typical workflows and struggles that Osgood had before moving to Vault Professional and um, or typical workflows and challenges. So Osgood are a leading American filling solutions manufacturer. Um, they've been offering innovative, reliable filling machinery uh, worldwide for over four decades. So just to set the scene for the demonstration, in this situation, the customer or a customer has approached Osgood and they've asked to change the position of one of their components within the product. So they have a server motor that's currently horizontally mounted and they need to change it to a vertical mount. So this has been identified by, by a field service member and he needs to communicate the customer's wishes to the engineering manager as quickly and as simply as possible. The engineering manager then needs to review raise the ECO and assign the work to the relevant engineer. Once the engineer has completed this information, it needs to be passed on for, to procurement in order for, for them to begin the purchasing process for parts and materials. Okay, so I'm gonna break um, to and from the PowerPoint, just to highlight what each section we're trying to uh, illustrate to you in terms of functionality. So the first part of the demonstration is covering uh, field service. So field service, I've identified several customers that are asking to change the position of the servo motor to improve circulation of liquid. So a customer has requested a change, and what we're gonna do is search for that, mo um, that server motor using the Vault web client. We're going to produce a markup, and then we're going to send this to the engineering manager. So the key point to take away from this one is we're going to do this using Vault's web client, which is um, free. There's no license on this. It's uh, a read-only uh, interface. So anyone within the business can use this and no CAD application is required. So the first thing we're gonna do is fire up Internet Explorer. So it does integrate with other explorers like Google Chrome or Firefox. But in this example, we're gonna use Internet Explorer. And as the field service engineer, I just need to log in to our vault using the web client. So as I said, the Vault Web Client is a read-only application. It is potential, it has the potential to upload and download data from this, but for unlimited licenses, you can use read-only access. The look and feel of it is very much like the Vault itself. We can start to browse data. At the same time, we can actually start to search for information. So in this example, the field service engineer knows the name of the server motor as Alan Bradbury. So again, Vault isn't specific to file name. We can actually search properties. And in this example, I'm just searching the name Alan. This has actually pulled up several documents and I can start to see the revision the status of the file. If I want to go into more detail, I can simply select the file and it will take me to that file and allow me to start viewing information. I can start to look at the properties of the document and we can actually see in this example under keywords is the name Alan Bradbury. So that is what it was finding on our initial search. We can also see who made it and its part number. As well as that, on the right-hand side, we can start to identify the different revisions. We can see when revision changes were made and at what version the file was at. You can also see who made that change. It could be the case we need to make a modification to the server motor. So what we can start to look at is what will be affected if we make a change. What 
is contained within this file. So we have the ability to look at users, and this shows us all the parts that make up this component. Alternatively, we can have a look at where something is used. So by going into this part, I can just ask for it to show me where is it used, what are the designs, and again, it shows me it's contained within the server motor. Coming back to the server motor, we can see it's contained in another assembly. And this is the assembly that we actually care about. We want to see the servo in place in the product. The web client provides you with tools for previewing files. So straight from the web client, without any need for a CAD product, we're able to preview this 3D document. We have various navigation uh, navigation tools, so we can pan, zoom. We can even select parts and start to look at properties within that document. So, oops, I'm just going to go back to that. So when we go into the model and start to navigate, we can start to access uh, alternative tools. So there are other resources. As well as being able to preview the file, we can also start to do markups or measurements. In this example, the field service engineer just wants to highlight the component that needs to be changed. This markup that can then be saved and emailed to the relevant engineering manager. So we can see straight from the web, web client without any need for CAD products, without any need for a vault license, the field service engineer has been able to go into the vault, view the latest file, do a markup and then send that information to the engineering manager. So in this particular example, the engineering manager is just going to receive an email from field service, which is going to request the change to the server motor. And then we're going to go into Vault and look for the existing product. We're then going to raise an engineering change order, identify the documents that are required for our engineer to start making that change, and then add that to our change order as well. So the next process really is focused on an introduction to the Vault interface at the end, the beginning of creating an engineering change order and adding multiple documents and information to a change order. So the first thing we're actually going to do is jump straight into Outlook. So as we discussed earlier in the presentation, you have integration with Outlook. What this means is, as and when we receive emails, we can check these emails into Vault. So any email we receive that's critical to a project, and we feel we need to keep this information within the Vault system so it's central with our engineering data, we can do so. We can see in this particular example, we've received an email from the field service team. They've identified a change to a model. They've given us a model number, but as well as that, they've attached a DWF of that change. So I need to store that within Vault, and I can do that very simply by using the check-in function. When checking in a file from Outlook, we can have it automatically map to a specific folder 
or we can manually target a folder we wish to store it in. In this example, I'm selecting uh, a new folder which I've just created as my storage point. I can also enter comments, which will give me traceability within Vault about why I've added this. So I could put in a reference, it's required for an ECO. So that file is now added to Vault and I get confirmation of that. So now I'm going to jump into the Vault environment and we'll start to look at the interface and raise our change order. So I can actually access our Vault straight from Outlook. So the first thing you'll see is I'm presented with a login. What this means is it's secure and controlled access. Based on who logs in, they may have different permissions within the environment. Once, in, once I'm logged into Vault, I can start to browse information. So the look and feel is very much like Windows Explorer or Outlook. We can see there's a series of folders. Once we go into a folder that contains data, it reveals it on the right hand side. In this example, I'm not sure where, um, where the product is, the field service engineer is referring to. So I'm going to start to do some searches. You have the ability to not only search file names, but also part numbers. So in this example, I'm trying to search for a specific component. Once I've found that component, I can select it and it'll start to bring up information in the bottom half of the pane. So I can view the history of a document and see its versions. I can see where it is used or what other um, assemblies or drawings it's used in. So as well as being able to do searches based on part number and file name, I can also do searches based on properties. In this example, I'm actually going to make an edit to this document's properties. And this is something, again, we can do straight from Vault. We have the ability to bulk edit properties of documents. Or, like in this example, I simply want to view this component's data sheet, and it will show me specific or critical property information related to this file. And at the same time, I'm going to edit that data sheet now to add some additional information. So without having to go back to the original CAD product, we're able to do that. As I said, in this example, we're just adding something to the keyword property. In this example, we're adding plate to keywords. As soon as I click OK, that property is updated. If we were to open that file in its native product, it would also see that property. So as I said, Vault doesn't only, does not only search for file name, it also searches for properties. So I'm actually going to extend my search. And I'm going to add keywords to my search criteria. And you'll notice there's lots of properties that I can search for. But we can also pick specific properties we're interested in. As soon as I type in plate on keywords, it does a search through the Vault system and finds my part, which I've recently renamed the property for or added the property to. If I want to open that within my CAD product, I can simply right click open and it will open straight in Inventor. Okay, so in this example, we need to search for the overall assembly. So I'm just going to do, again, some quick searches. I'm going to search for 932, 
which is the model number they refer to in the email. And I can see that's yielded a result of 163. So that's too many documents and folders for me to search through. So I'm going to use some words that I've, that I've identified should be within the data set. So I know that the particular assembly I'm looking for is a vacuum assembly. So I can do that as a search. And you can see in this example, that finds uh, and yields a result of 16 objects. So it's massively reduced uh, the results. In this example, I believe I found the data set that I'm interested in. And one of the key advantages of, within Vault is it gives you far more information. So I can start to look at the history of that file and see who has made changes and when. I can look at what makes up this data set from the users tab. I can look at the revisions, the states, and who's modified those files over the entire set of components contained within it. I can also look at where this assembly is used. It just gives me a broader picture to identify what could be affected by the change that's being requested. And I can also look at previous change orders that have been assigned to this particular product or component. I can preview this. Again, just by using the preview, I can confirm whether this is indeed the correct product and it's the server motor they're talking about. Finally, I can look at the CAD bomb, which gives me a, a bill of material view of the CAD model. So within the Vault client, we have a, a rich amount of data that we can, we can access, search for, view, and edit. So I'm ready to raise a change order on this particular product or item. So I can simply access change order on the right click. I could add it to an existing ECO that's been raised. In this example, I'm going to create a new one. You'll notice as soon as I create the change order, a number is automatically assigned. So you can customize the numbering scheme to match your current uh, change process or your change numbering scheme. All I need to do is add the necessary information. In this example, we're just giving it a title and a brief description of why we're making the change. What this means is anyone accessing the file has greater visibility straight away of why we're making that modification. In this example, customers are making the request to mount it vertically to improve the circulation of hydraulic fluid. We can also specify a due date for when this change needs to occur or be completed by. We can also include other properties within a change order. So if there's any critical information that you would normally submit with a change, this can also be contained within this uh, electronic change order. The records tab shows you all files associated to this change. In this example, we're only interested in this assembly, but if there are other parts or other documents affected by the change, we could add it to this records. The comments tab provides us with a way of commenting throughout the change process. Anyone involved in the change order can add comments. In this example, the title and description is sufficient. The files tab provides us with a way of viewing all related documentation. So we can see in this example, the files tab gives us access to and the ability to preview the assembly, the assembly associated to the ECO without having to even navigate to the file. We also have markup capabilities straight through the change order environment. 
In this example, someone's already provided a markup, so we don't need to utilize this functionality. And again, we can apply marking up not only to 3D, but 2D data. So in this example, we're actually going to attach some pre-existing information. In this example, I need to attach the email and markup. As soon as those have been added to our change order, whoever's viewing this file can instantly get access and view the email that was originally sent to the engineering manager and the markup that was sent, sent to the engineering manager from field service. So it gives us a central repository, a digital ECO, and a way of viewing all related documents from one single location. So in this example, I actually need to add some more documents, but they're not in the vault. So adding documents to Vault couldn't be easier. We can simply drag and drop documents within this environment. So simple drag and drop will bring in all of the related documents from that folder. In this example, the folder contains a mixture of images, which again we can preview and we can control. And you can see that they're currently at revision one work in progress. We have CAD files, which have been provided by Alan Bradbury in relation to the servo motors that we're interested in or using in our product. We can see we've got PDFs, again, that we have the ability to preview straight from the Vault client. More importantly, we have this Alan Bradbury folder, which gives us PDF specification sheets for the servo motor that we're going to change or we'll swap in. Uh, finally, we also have a spreadsheet. In this example, the spreadsheet is containing information that we want to provide to our purchasing team in order for them to purchase the correct servo motor for the change order request. So we need to associate some of these documents to our ECO. And again, that couldn't be easier. Simply by selecting a document, I can add it to an existing change order. I can search for the change order based on its number, or just do a global search and pick from a list of change orders. So in two clicks, that's now associated to a change order. So the last thing left for me to do as a manager is to submit this to the relevant people. This is done through routing. So routing dictates who's involved in the engineering change order process. These could be people that are just notified when the file moves to a different state, to people that need to review or approve, and as well as that, or more importantly, the responsible engineer. In this example, we can see the current status of the change order is at creation stage. So as I'm the person raising it, I'm actually going to submit it to open. So an important point to make here is the ECO can uh, link into your um, exchange servers or your email process. So as people um, take the change order through the different states, it will email the relevant people involved at that, at that state. So as soon as I submit it to open, it emails the relevant person to notify them that there is a ECO open. In this case, as I'm the manager, I'm not only creating it, but I'm gonna be the person that submits it to work for the responsible engineer. So I simply just respond to that ECO and submit it once more. Again, it will email the relevant person involved in the change process, which in this case is the engineer. He will then 
get a hyperlink, which will take him straight to the change order where he can start to view all of the related documentation. So that's the engineering manager. What we've done in this section is we found we've received an email from field service, we've vaulted it, so it'll keep all of the related project information in one central location. We've managed to utilize Vault search tools to quickly find, edit properties, raise a change order, identify affected um, what's going to be affected by change. We've added the related documents that the engineer needs for the required change. And then we've submitted it to the engineer for work. So the next part of the process would be for the engineer to make the relevant changes. So in this part of the process, the engineer needs to review the ECO, make the necessary necessary changes, which is replacing parts, submit the ECO for review, and release the relevant data. So as the engineer, they would log in to the vault. And what they would actually find is they would have a work list on the left-hand side. So as well as receiving an email to tell them that there is an ECO, so that email will actually hyperlink to vault and take them straight to the change order. If they're already in the vault environment, they will actually get a work list. And if I click on this, it will take me straight to my change order. You can see when viewing a change order, you get it all within the preview pane. I can view the general information. I can see that the engineering manager says the customer has requested mounting of the servo to be changed to vertical to improve the circulation of fluid. I can look on the records tab to see the associated files, which in this example is an assembly and an Excel file. I can look at any comments that have been made, which in this example is just comments to show that it's been opened and submitted to work. I can look at all related files. So more importantly for the engineer, you can instantly access the affected file. You can view the original email from the field service engineer you can look at the markup because it may have critical information. And you can also look at the spreadsheet which identifies the required motor. So the engineer can start to make the relevant changes. So in this example, I'm going to go straight to the assembly. And what I could do, I can see that it's currently in a released state. So I can simply change the status of that file to work in progress. Now the file's work in progress, I could open it with an inventor and make the relevant changes, which I'm going to do. So I'm actually going to open and check it out. Once the file's checked out, I can start to make the changes required. So one of the required changes is to swap the server motor out. So I'm going to do the component replace. I'm going to replace it with an existing item in Vault. So Inventor has incredible integration with Autodesk Vault. So they have a consistent interface between both products. But not only that, it provides you with the same functionality. So I could do a search for plate, for example, and it finds all plates or anything containing the property plate. In this example, I'm actually looking to swap the servo motor out. And I know it's an Allen Bradbury servo, so I'm going to do a search for Allen. That finds several assemblies. Again, in this example, I can identify what I'm after, but if necessary, I can actually customize the interface and bring across information that might be important, like viewing the description. Now I'm able to 
view the description straight from the open dialog. And I can see that the current item is released at revision B. So we have a huge amount of information made available to us. So once all the necessary changes were made, as it is in this case, changing out the servo motor, I can simply check in the data set. So one of the great things within the Vault interface is the feedback that we get provided with Vault. So we have great integration. It's showing me items and their current status. So these are all locked because they're released, but it's showing me the file that I'm currently working on. It's checked out to me. So all I need to do is just check that data set in. So once that's checked in, I can simply go back to Vault and I could su submit the ECO to the next stage. So in this example, just by clicking on the data set, I can view the change order underneath. So as the engineer, I could submit it to the next date. The other alternative is for me to go to the change order list, but I don't need to do that. Like I say, I have the ability to access it straight from the file itself. So the next stage would be to submit it to check stage. The relevant person that needs to check it will be emailed. If we just take a look, at the change order, we can see the current status is check. Obviously, the, beyond that, we can then review and approve and close the change order. So in this example, I'm not gonna go through the check, review and approve process because I'm one person. Um, so let's make the assumption that the ECO has been checked, at, reviewed and approved and that the information is ready to go to the next stage. So one or two things I wanted to mention. Um, when you're looking at, when you, you're going through the check and approve process, you can dictate who's involved in, uh, in check and review. You can set up unanimous or ununanimous approval, meaning we could have four people that approve. And if it's set to unanimous, all four people have to approve. If it's not unanimous, only one of the four do. So there's lots of configuration and settings we can set up. You can have multiple routings. So you may have different routings for different types of jobs. So you can create as many routings as you want. So the next stage is the procurement. In this part of the demonstration, what we're looking to do is generate items within Vault. The main purpose of us generating items is we need to create a full CAD bomb. And by generating that CAD bomb, we can then export this for our company business system. Uh, so the main benefits of doing this is we're not duplicating information. We're ensuring that we're passing on uh, the most up-to-date information to our business system and it's accurate. And it reduces uh, the amount of work being replicated by different departments or users. 
So generating a bill of materials couldn't be easier within Vault. The procurement team could log in or the engineer could start to build a bill, bill of material. This is simply done by assigning an object as an item. So assigning a component as an item essentially generates a bill of material item. So we can see within here, it actually has associated, associated files. So this one item actually has multiple documents. So an item doesn't differentiate between the 3D file and the 2D documentation. What this means is we can go to an item and view all related documents rather than having to search into different locations. So we could associate other files to this item, like assembly specification sheets, testing sheets, FEA tests. These might be something that's all associated to this one item and we can bundle them all in here. You'll also notice that the item has pulled information through from the model. This information is metadata that's going to be important within our bill of materials. So what it's meaning is we're not going to have to double data enter. It's pulling the rich information from our model. The history tab will show us any changes or the history of our item. As it's new, we don't have anything. The bill of materials shows us the bill of materials of this current item. So items, one of the great uh, purposes or uses of items is the ability to exchange with other business systems. It helps us uh, maintain and improve accuracy of critical part information. So description, material, part number. Uh, all of this information is important and works to assist costing purchasing and it reduces the manual working out of data between different systems. So that's the main reason why we're using this item, these items. You'll see on the bill of materials tabs, it shows all of the subcomponents, and we're starting to see title and description information, quantities and positions. We can also see the revision and current status of these files. In this particular example, we need to add additional items that haven't been included in the CAD model because it's not possible. So we need to add a service kit. When we provide this product to customers, we always provide a service kit with the product. This is something that you simply couldn't model within the CAD product. And this is why we use items. It enables us to create a full bill of materials. We can create an item on the fly, in this example, the item already exists within our system, so we can simply say, add from existing. We can search that item number, or we can simply type in what we're looking for. In this example, I'm searching for a kit because I don't know the item number. It then finds the service kit that I'm after. I can see that it's currently at revision A released and it's categorized as a product. As soon as I click OK, the service kit is added. If we take a look at the service kit, we can actually expand it and see it's made up of several items. The service kit is actually a product, and inside of it is, an, is a canister of oil. There are gaskets, tubes, and zip ties, as well as an assorted box of screws. So we're able to start to build the full bill of materials. We can start to have, add other information like shipping notes, the crate that it gets shipped out on, wrapping, anything else that we would want to associate with the bill of materials for this product. We can also rename or renumber items. The purpose for doing this might be to match existing business systems or company standards. 
So we're going to rename several files by simply using the change number command. It will bring up a numbering system. So we can set this numbering system to match any existing business uh, downstream business system. As soon as we click OK, all items are renumbered. This information can be pushed through to the parts. So if we were to go into one of these parts, we'll see that the number that we've just generated is pushed to the part number of the document. We also have search tools. So if we're trying to find specific items within the bill of materials, we can do quick finds and it will take us straight to an item and we can start to investigate it. In this example, I'm searching for a cap screw. We can see that the current quantity for this object is two, when we actually require 200. So again, often when in CAD models, um, you don't necessarily want to model or include or place every instance of a bulb due to complexity and time. So we're able to override the quantity from the bill of materials within Vault in order to speed up the process. The order of our bill of materials can be changed. We have the ability to change the position numbers so we can reorder how our bill of materials is presented when we output. In addition to that, we can even switch off columns. This means when we export our bill of materials, it won't be included. It could be the case that certain items are not at a stage where we want to provide the information to the procurement team, whereas other items have long lead times and we need to start the purchasing process. Vault also provides you with the ability to customize a view to add additional fields. So you can add bill of material specific fields. So like in this example, we have a column which is a detail ID number. So these might be custom properties that you start to build up at the point where you generate a bill of materials. So we may have a column that identified whether certain components are spare items or not. In this example, we need to add an additional servo to the product as we always ship a spare one. Again, we can search from existing. Again, I don't know the item number, so I can simply search for Alan. Or in this example, a servo. And that additional servo has been added in. Once we save, that item is saved into our bill of materials. Exporting to downstream business systems couldn't be easier. So we have a simple import and export function. Within here, we can choose whether we only want to export released information. In this example, we want to export stuff that is work in progress due to long lead times. Again, we can pick and choose if items should be excluded from the export. We have the ability to export to various formats. And we can pick and choose properties that are critical to us. Like in this example, certain information might be missing, like description.
or the effective start and end date. Once we have all the necessary properties that we need for our bomb export, we can simply use an export. It will give us a summary and tell us if there are any items that were unsuccessful. Re releasing items again couldn't be easier. In order to release items, all we need to do is simply select them and use the change state command. We also have the ability to compare the bill of materials so we can see how the bill of materials has evolved over versions or revisions. By using the compare tool, we can choose what revision we're interested in comparing. It will then identify objects that have been edited, that have been added or changed. In this example, it's identifying that the previous revision or version of this bomb compare was in work in progress and it is now released showing us the properties have been edited on this file and it will also identify files that have been added or removed. We also have the ability to create a bomb report of critical data. Vault provides us with a series of different templates for reports. In this example, I want to create a report for bill of materials of parts only. Vault will then generate the necessary report and, and table. And we can see in this example, it's created a table of information for all parts contained within this assembly, but not only that, all the critical property information I chose to include. This report can be saved in Excel, PDF or Word format. Okay, so that concludes the demonstration of uh, Vault Professional, the change order um, environment, and obviously um, including the bill of materials within that process. So um, what we've been trying to show you from this presentation and demonstration is that you can take control of change with Autodesk Vault Professional. Um, there are three key elements to managing a change or managing change. Vault Professional will help you keep everyone on the same page by enabling the right people to have the right access at the right time. Vault um, Professional can help you automate workflows and notifications and remove bottlenecks. It provides you with a central repository for all your change, uh, all your changes in terms of data, and this is a must if you want to manage change effectively. Essentially, with Autodesk Vault Professional, we can help you take control of change. So, many of you may already be using Vault, and you may have Vault Basic. So hopefully, you can see from today that you can benefit by going pro. Autodesk Vault Professional offers a, yeah, a variety of features uh, which are purpose-built to make engineering change management faster and easier. There are a host of other features that we haven't demonstrated in this webinar, um, 
So it's just a small amount of features that we've demonstrated here. So there's a, a wide range of other functionality available to involve professional, which will add towards you managing change. So I'm just going to open the floor for questions. So hopefully I'm able to answer any questions that you may have. Um, once we've gone through all the questions, I'll just wrap up this, um, wrap up the webinar um, and provide you with some information on how you can contact us moving forwards if you have any additional queries. So yeah, if you just post questions on the board, I'm happy to answer them. I did see someone had their hand raised, so sorry, I just clicked to lower that. So you can put through any question you want. So one of the questions we've got is, can you use the Vault Bomb to pull in parts to an assembly? Um, the answer to that is yes. You can actually refer to the bomb when placing parts in Inventor, if that's your question. Um, I believe I can show that. So within Inventor, you have the ability to place from Vault. And you can actually search items. So you can search the item master. So we'll have a look and see if plate is in there. So we can see we're now actually searching the item master. It's not files anymore. And I'm able to place in an object from the item master. So it's just because I don't have this checked out currently. So I'll just do a checkout. Go back to place. So you can see that's placing an item in rather than it referring to the file. So another question we've got is can you lock a project after it's been made so it doesn't update with changes to standard parts? Um, so in terms of viewing where everything's a revision based system, if you look at, um, you can set it to be revision um, biased. So the revision of the, a legacy data set can get it to show the revision it was using at that point in time. So yes, you could do that. Um, in terms of locking it to use legacy revision. Um, I'm not sure if that's possible if, if the data set is going under change. But in terms of viewing a data set, you can show it to always show you the revision that was used at the time of the release of that specific item. So I don't know if any other guys have any more questions.
Okay, so if there's no more questions, I'm just going to wrap up. Um, if there are questions that pop up during the wrap-up process, I'm happy to answer them. Um, so yeah, feel free to post some more questions whilst we do the wrap-up. So, um, first of all, I'd just like to thank you for spending the time to attend this webinar today. Hopefully you've learned about why managing change is important. Hopefully we've identified that uh, some issues that you may currently have and how Vault Professional can help with that. So, um, recommended next step would be to get in touch with us if you're interested in finding out more about Vault Professional. Um, so I've provided you with some emails that you can use. So you've got inquiries at greytech.co.uk. This will, um, if you email this one, it'll put you through to your local sales manager. Um, alternatively, get in touch with Gary Edwards at greytech.co.uk, who is the MFG sales manager. We can get in touch with myself, Stuart.smith at greytech.co.uk. So for anyone that is interested, our next recommendation would be to come on site to um, go through the process review and create a proposal for a Vault configuration moving forwards uh, with Vault Professional. So yeah, we will be putting this on YouTube. Um, we do have a YouTube channel, uh, and it has already on there several videos uh, related to various features and functionality within Vault Professional. So you go to our YouTube channel. You may find that there is already a permutation of this uh, webinar already available through our channel which is just a customer facing version. Um, so yeah, feel free to go to our website, but we will put up some videos on the YouTube channel in relation to this webinar. Okay, so once again, thank you for attending this webinar. Appreciate you taking the time out of your day to sit down and watch this. Hopefully you found it useful. Like I say, if you do have any queries, if you're already um, a customer of ours, get in touch with your local sales manager. As I said, you have seen the previous slide, which shows you uh, who you need to contact. If you're not currently a customer of ours, you can get in touch with inquiries at greytech.co.uk. Yeah, once again, thank you very much, and I hope you all have a great week, uh, weekend. Thanks.